All right, so let's look at some trig questions. Hopefully, I'll be able to work through these in a couple of different ways so that you can get some understandings and see different ways of looking at the same problem. Sometimes this will help make things easier, and sometimes it'll help you get a problem that requires one or the other of these understandings. Don't get stuck in doing the same thing every single time because then you're stuck in a specific process rather than using your understandings of the ideas. Okay? So, Here's a couple of different ways of doing this one. We've got sine of theta equals 2 thirds. Now, one way to do this is to think of sine of theta equals soak a doa. I always think of like Indians going, American Indians, like Native Indians going around a campfire going, soak a doa, soak a doa. Either that or just thinking of somebody trying to suck your toe. That's really weird. Anyway, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So now that we have sine of theta being opposite over hypotenuse, that means if I were to just draw some random angle, then the opposite side would have to be 2, and the hypotenuse would have to be 3. Now from here, you can actually use Pythagorean theorem to find your missing sides. You can go 2 squared plus b squared equals... 3 squared. And so that would be 4 plus b squared equals 9. And subtract 4 from both sides. And we got b squared equals 5. Therefore, b equals the square root of 5. Now, mathematically, it should be plus or minus. But of course, and uh, actually, that does actually matter. So we'll go ahead and do that. Because you could have a plus 5, which is going to the right. You could also have a negative 5, which is going to the left. And you'll notice that this triangle right here is also going to give you the right ratios, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. If this is my angle, opposite over hypotenuse. So now I need to find cosine of theta. Well, for this triangle right here, it's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That's what cosine of theta is, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of theta equals root 5 over 3. Now, for this triangle right here, it's going to be different, right? It's going to be negative root 5 over 3 equals cosine of theta, right? Again, adjacent over hypotenuse. It's negative because it's going to the left. So this actually counts kind of as an illustration. If you want, you can go ahead and you can draw the unit circle, and you can do this, and you can say, okay, cosine, sine is going to be positive when I'm going up, because remember, sine refers to the y values. So if this is positive, that means we've got to be going up. So sine will be positive here, and sine will be positive there, which therefore means I've got these two triangles, and so then you can work it out from there. So you can deal with the unit circle if you want to. I just prefer not to have to restrict myself to the circle. Um, now, there's actually another way to do this. We learned in class yesterday that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta always equals 1 for a unit circle. So, therefore, if sine is 2 thirds, this would be 2 thirds squared, because this is just sine theta squared, right? Plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. So I can go, this is now 4 ninths plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. I can subtract the 4 ninths from each side. And I get cosine squared of theta equals 1 minus 4 ninths is 5 ninths, which now I can take the square root of both sides. And of course, when I square root it, it will be theta equals plus or minus. Now if I do that, I'll have a square root of 5. And then the square root of 9, of course, is 3. And so therefore, I ended up with positive root 5 over 3 and negative root 5 over 3, which is exactly the same thing that I ended up with right here. All right, so there you go. That's the first question for today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop it, and you can go on to the next video for the next part.